Welcome back, Fino here. Now I need you to brace yourselves. This is Amaxa Shiro's Wikipedia page. Wait, 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 I'm not gonna read it all out. I'm not an internet documentarian. But look at this bit up top. His Christian name was Geronimo. I ran into this way back when I was figuring out how to pronounce the guy's name, and I don't know if it's true or not. The whole article is sparsely sourced, so someone could have just made it the hell up, but it's too wild for me not to mention here. G-Man just pops up in the most unexpected places, doesn't he? But as for the matter at hand, our subject today is the five-star ruler in Fate Grand Order. Amongst is actually a limited servant. You wouldn't think it given his, uh, quirks, but limited servants were built different back then. Guy's been around for an extremely long time, going all the way back to the very first Chaldea Boys in 2018. And like a number of old servants, he's gotten a massive slew of buffs over the years. Skills, NP, and even his hit counts got adjustments. But is this enough to keep Amoxa relevant? Let's find out. Amoxa's first skill is Prayer for the Long Journey. On release, this started as a simple Stars per Turn effect, but now it's a targetable skill that also grants NP gain. The option to target is nice, but realistically, if you bother to bring Amaxa into a fight in the first place, odds are you'll be using this on him to try and fish for additional NPs. Next up is Goblet of Seraph. On release, this was an extremely jank skill that reduced the target enemy's charge, but only if they were undead or a demon. Not demonic, demon. Which only applies to a small selection of mid-boss enemies, the alligators from Lost World 4, and... Maxwell's demon? I mean, I guess. Suffice to say, this effect was comically useless, but hey, at least it comes with a recurring battery. 20% per turn for 5 turns. Not bad, huh? Well, it has a 10 turn cooldown. Thankfully, the Slapstick Museum event has come with a strengthening quest that makes this dot a lot more usable. The charge reduction effect now has no restriction, meaning anyone's fair game. It applies an AoE Buster Resistance debuff, gains an immediate 20% battery on top of its recurring effect, and even has its cooldown reduced to 8 turns. But 8 turns is still a long time, something that's gonna haunt Amaxa in a few months, but we'll get back to that. Rounding on Amaxa's standard skills is Divine Judgment, Fake. This immobilizes an enemy's servant for a turn. With its upgrade, it gains a 3 turn buster ramp, so that's cool. To my understanding, this skill is a reference to how in Apocrypha's Third Grail War, Amaxa would cheat and abuse ruler command spells to lock down his opponents. Honestly, that's pretty clever. Kinda makes you wonder why the Einsburns didn't just do that in every timeline instead of the whole Angra Mainu business. Now let's talk about this guy's ace in the hole. Twin Arm Big Crunch. This AoE Buster NP preemptively purges buffs. It also has an overcharge effect, reducing crit chance. If my research is on point, this is, to this date, the only preemptive, unqualified AoE buff purge tied to an offensive NP. If a buff is removable, it will remove it, barring purge resistance, of course. And what made this so interesting back in the day is that a lot of NPs would deal damage and then purge, wasting their damage. In encounters where enemies spam powerful defensive effects, this would make this whole process extremely slow, because they either stuff your damage or you're relying on skills that often have long cooldowns. If they're just running one form of protection like an Evade or Invuln, you can get around that through other means. But when they use multiple like an Evade with a Guts or an On Death effect or Raw Defense, that'll cause you all kinds of problems. And in fact, there's an infamous fight in Lost Bell 3 against a large number of enemies that do exactly this. Amaxa was the solution. But there are a few caveats. Firstly, Amaxa's effective NP damage is low. Even at NP5, his personal damage is only around 40k. He'll undershoot Scotty, Karen, and Ruler Moriarty. He beats out Io and Johanna, but those two can run Black Grail without making major sacrifices. Amaxa doesn't have that convenience. And his damage is absolutely going to be a problem. If you look at that Lost Bell 3 note again, you'll notice that no enemy in that fight goes above 70k health, and the most troubling ones range between 20 and 36k. But even if we compare him to other buster attackers, he has a pretty serious drawback in that he can't exploit the Koyan Sky system to NP three times in a row. His battery having an 8 turn cooldown is an absolute death sentence on this front. Even with two Koyan Sky cooldown reductions, the CDR from Atlas Uniform, and a turn passing, that's still only 7. If that cooldown were only one turn shorter and that battery 10% bigger, Amaxa might still have a valid use case. Because that 5 turn effect duration would give him staying power beyond the 3 turns that most loopers have, and substantially reduce his reliance on face card RNG but unfortunately he falls short. And so I started thinking, what is the closest alternative? Now Moxa is, in fact, the only servant with an unrestricted AoE buff purge on a damaging NP, but there are other servants that fill a similar niche. These are ones that preemptively purge defensive buffs. Summer Abigail, all right, she's pretty bad, though unlike Moxa, she is Vich compatible. Odysseus, who's okay, I guess. Summer Okita Alter is actually pretty solid since she's a quick servant that can operate without a K-scope, but where I realized Amaxa is in deep shit is when I got to Summer Ibuki Doji, a meta AoE arts looper. 5-hit Noble Phantasm, 50% battery, an NP gain buff with the same magnitude as Amaxa's. Her NP even reduces crit chance, a little like Amaxa's though admittedly at a slightly lower magnitude. And she's a berserker to boot. 
If Musashi sweating bullets, Amux is going into cardiac arrest right now. Now the one silver lining here is that the umbrella of defensive buffs has a major omission. Guts. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, Guts isn't listed among the effects that defensive buff purges will actually purge. So if your enemies are hiding behind both Guts and another protection effect, Amuxa will still do his job in that particular situation. However, I will warn you that most of the time I get annoyed at enemies having Guts effects, it's because they're box buffs and they can't be purged, and there's nothing Amuxa can do about those. On the subject of purge alternatives, I'll mention that there are also servants with offensive buff purges, but those buffs typically don't matter until your opponents take their turn, so whether you purge them preemptively or not doesn't really matter in most situations. Even setting aside his kit, Amaxa is really fucking weird. You know how rulers need some of every class piece and monument to ascend? Due to what I can only assume is an oversight, Amaxa needs rider pieces twice, omitting lancer pieces entirely. I can tell this wasn't intended because he does need lancer monuments. Same for lancer skill gems. And apparently there was a point in time where Amaxa would get different hit counts on his extra card based on whether he ended his brave chain at close or long range. That's absolutely nuts. They're standardized now, but good lord, what a mess. Want to know what Amaxa's anti-class append is? Ruler, baby, because he fought John that one time. Suffice to say, this sounds like an absolute nightmare, just two potatoes slapping each other. And I can think of maybe one situation in the entire game where you'd want Amaxa's skill set for a ruler. And that takes us back, once again, to Lost Belt 3, where Lelouch will try to spam his Noble Phantasm for buffs. With a bit of planning, Amaxa can counter each of his damage pushes with a stun or an NP of his own. Or, you know, you could just borrow Jean Alter to make your life easier. Shiro's Bond CE gives your party damage against undead and demon enemies. I could think of worse Bond 10s, but you probably wouldn't want to run it anyway. A lot of the really dangerous undead and demon enemies are ones that are in our past, and beefy ones you'd encounter now are part of 90 plus and 90 plus plus nodes where they're more of a speed bump for your charge refund than they are actual threats. As for which craft essence you would use, uh, you got a few lines of thought, though I regret to inform you that they're all expensive. Firstly, you could use a K-Scope. This will guarantee that he gets at least one Noble Phantasm off, and even with a zero-star copy, you can fire off a first-turn NP with his upgraded battery. This is doubly useful if you're only using a Mox as a switch in to remove some troublesome buffs before he gets taken out with a counterattack. Then there's Prisma Cosmos, which grants charge per turn, playing into the value game established by his long-lasting charge buff. Fragment of 2030 helps out with his crit star generation, though I'd only use it if you're running a Mox as a supportive pick. Finally, there's Black Grail. This is the ideal damage option given Shiro's troubles on that front, but you'll be leaning into his refund troubles. In the future, you'll be able to mitigate this to an extent with Mighty Chains. Amuxa has a 2A 2B deck, so as long as you can find a single quick card, your star and NP generation will improve a fair bit. This plays nicely with the incremental value from his end-of-turn effects. As for good teammates, you're in a similarly expensive boat, since Amuxa's need for charge and or damage pushes you into the arms of high-end supports like Merlin, Koinskaya of Light, and even Oberon. The latter grants a substantial amount of charge and damage at the cost of applying a permanent taunt, among other crippling effects. In situations where you only need a Muxa to get value once, you can exploit this property to make sure he leaves the field in a timely manner. But wait a second. I mentioned Merlin there, and it's not just for damage. Merlin gives both healing and protection, which for fights where you want a Muxa to survive, are things you'll want to look into. Shiro has no hard mitigation. He relies on his stun, crit chance reduction, and the ruler class's natural resistances to do the work for him. But against Noble Phantasms, you'll want something a little more definitive. As of this recording, Shiro has all his upgrades unlocked on NA, so I strongly recommend getting them if you have any intention of using him. But for a guy who's had an upgrade to almost every aspect of his kit, Amaxa is somewhat underwhelming. The price you pay for his particular type of buff purge is immense and barring some very narrow situations, not worth the effort and expense. Amaxa Shiro peaked in Lost Belt 3, and updates to FGO's roster have just made him seem clunkier and more outdated over time. His time has come and gone, and I can't recommend him. Like if you found this video helpful, subscribe for more, and come watch me at twitch.tv slash Tyson, where I stream every weekend. 3pm Pacific Time, Friday through Sunday. This week, on top of the usual fate shenanigans, I'll be hitting up Nikkei's Chainsaw Man in a bit of gotcha agony, so you won't want to miss that. See you there.